You may be well financially, or maybe not. Either way, here's one job that could help you in moments when extra cash could be useful. Many people don't think or know that besides being a waitress or a waiter at a restaurant, you can be a caterer, specifically a server or a waiter or a waitress at a catering company, though often only referred to as a caterer in the industry. Catering is the process of preparing and providing food for social events and gatherings, to name a few such as weddings, concessions, corporate, birthdays, and more. There are two types of catering events, on-premises where food is prepared and served at the venue because there is an available kitchen that could be used for this particular event and there are cooks who prepare the food. And off-premises where food is prepared at a separate location and transported to the event venue in an isolated food pan carrier, also called hot boxes or warmers where you can fit multiple hot pans and keep the food hot for up to seven hours. And for cold food, containers that look like mini refrigerators are used and are filled with a solution that stays frozen below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. I have never considered catering a separate job from a regular waitress or waiter at a restaurant. But what I have learned is that even though an event might be happening at a restaurant that already has its own waiters and waitresses to serve the event, the caterers prefer bringing their own staff because they're familiar with the food and their service. The difference between a waiter or waitress and a caterer is that the waiter usually serves food at one location of a restaurant but is not in charge of the food. Caterers can often handle the food, serve it, and take care of the guests from the beginning till the end of the event. Catering is usually done by the company that cooks the food and staffs the service or has a close relationship with a company or a person that manages a group of waiters and always staffs the event as the catering company books the events. Another key difference in New York City, waitresses and waiters mainly get paid based on tips while caterers work on hourly base pay and tips may or may not occur. When they do, we get very happy because of the little extra appreciation. And some people I have worked with really understand that and give you a small tip regularly. The role of a catering server depends on the event, but here are some things I had to do. Set up the event space with tables, chairs, decorations, such as ornaments, lights, candles, and a buffet area. Wipe down plates or even wash something if need be since things can get dirty or damaged in transportation. Prepare the food prior to serving it, especially for small private events at someone's home. Besides preparing the space, the caterer has one job even bigger than any of that and that is attaining to the host's needs of the event and all its guests. At this type of events, people have a pre-established relationship, so it's super important that you treat people with kindness and respect at all times. Most shifts are about four to five hours long per event. Many people work in this industry more than one shift as it can be a seasonal job and work is needed. Here are some disadvantages I have discovered working in the industry. Carrying heavy things is inevitable. You often find yourself having to set up the space, which means you have to carry tables, chairs, and sometimes serving their certain plates or platters that are quite heavy. Though this doesn't happen at every event, you are rarely know in advance. You are not always able to choose the events that you work and the locations because most work is seasonal and not consistent. Carrying food from one floor to another by climbing stairs and sometimes that could be climbing from the first floor to the fifth floor. Though I haven't experienced this often, it does happen and you have to keep it in mind, especially in New York City where space is limited. Working at private events in private homes can sometimes be challenging because you want to accommodate the people living there, but you also have to set up for the event. I once had a host where I was invited as a replacement for one of my colleagues because apparently she wasn't doing a good job. But when I arrived there and followed all her instructions, I still wasn't doing a good enough job. My colleague who was working with me was also not good enough. So sometimes you meet people 
who unfortunately you can't meet their expectations because they're very unclear or unreasonable. Though it was a privilege to work in some beautiful, stunning homes with great views, sometimes the space is limited. You are setting up the event while the whole family is right there in the room or the space is too tight and you are not sure where you're allowed to put things or not and you're working with limited time so finding the host to solve the problems they're dealing with is also a challenge because they're also trying to entertain their guests working in new york city in catering often you meet spaces that are too small trying to fit some fancy decoration and a great number of people the greatest challenge here is trying to serve the food especially the hot food you're very lucky if your caterer pays you well but sometimes the work does not match the pay something that i used to do especially when i started out is i would go away for a weekend and work multiple shifts basically from breakfast till dinner so you would have 12 14 hours days easily and that is absolutely exhausting catering is seasonal work so if you have a family it may not be an ideal job unless you're good at managing your money this is a customer service job if you don't treat people well you will not be asked back for another job and you got to enjoy it so on another note, if you care about people too much, this will drain you and leave you feeling exhausted and low energy. So you really want to keep that in mind if you're looking for this type of work. It's a job that requires you on your feet the whole day throughout pretty much 99% of the process. I think this is the greatest disadvantage of this work. One cancel event can cause the company not to book you again or they may not give you as many opportunities because they feel that you may not be reliable unless you have established a relationship with them. Even so, sometimes you may work with a company for years and they will still not forgive you for that one last minute cancellation or a cancellation that they have set you in and a few days before the event you decide to cancel because life happens. Hearing all those disadvantages, you probably feel a little bit discouraged about this job, but I promise you, there are also good things. So let's go over the advantages of being a caterer. Some families are so kind and nice and would even help you by passing you a plate or holding a door for you. Those people would always make me want to come back and serve them again or go back to another event. Being offered food on the job was my biggest weakness and I would say not many jobs allow this and also not every company in catering will allow you to have food. But I have to admit, I'm a foodie. Food is my weakness and my strength and sometimes whenever we had a long day it felt so good to get a plate of food. If you enjoy working with people this is a job for you. Of course you need the right people, the right team who want to help each other out and work together towards a common goal. I personally enjoy working with people, so I had mostly positive experiences of working with a great team. You make friends and you get to learn their life stories as you work together. From those stories, I got to learn and be inspired to never give up. Most people I met had a strong inner drive and work ethics. Many were immigrants, so hearing their stories of triumph inspired me even more to go after my dreams and to be compassionate of my experience and those of others. If we were to think about technicality, there should be a person who does decorations. And this is one thing that feels so good when you go to a job and it's easy because decoration is set up, there are people in the kitchen setting up the food for serving and you focus on being the server primarily where you take care of the guests and that's it. As much as it is a disadvantage to have seasonal work, I also think it could be an advantage. For me, when I was in school, it felt good to have summer jobs or now that I am building a business and becoming a content creator, it's great to have some extra cash sometimes come in unexpectedly because people still reach out and ask, are you available on this day at this time? 
and that is awesome. Which got me to the next point of it's great to have it as a side job. This could mean you need a new pair of shoes and the job that you currently have doesn't really give you the salary for you to buy maybe that branded pair. So by having this job on occasion, you can now afford and allow yourself to splurge a little bit. The heart wants what it wants. Another thing that makes this a great side job is the fact that the shifts are short. They're usually four hours long. If you run overtime, maybe around five to six hours, that still leaves you a lot of time for yourself. You can make those plans with friends and family, or you can have the morning to yourself whatever you choose but that's why i love it i can maybe film a part of a video or edit part of it and it feels great to get ahead not just with my basic adulting responsibilities but also towards my projects you can establish long-term relationships and work specific holidays or time periods and be invited every year for those events catering helped me be independent through high school and college but those are only few benefits. The help that I got to learn better English, meet people from different countries, cultures, and languages. It helped me improve my customer service skills. It taught me to set boundaries. And I'll give you some examples. Sometimes we had to carry heavy trays of food, especially early in my career. And the kitchen staff would serve a similar amount for men and women to carry. I recall I was about 17 years old having to speak up so that I was not taken advantage of. It's a really big deal, especially being a woman. Another example is sometimes it is exhausting as you prioritize the event and the guests, so you have to learn when to stop, otherwise you will take on a job after job and find yourself unwell after a while. And it helped me pay for my bills and still does while working on my business and creating content. As content creation really takes a lot of your time, but it takes a very long time for it to bring in monetary benefits. Here are some interesting but obvious facts. New York City is a very diverse city, probably one of the most diverse cities culturally in the world. But even so, people with a minimum salary rarely hire someone to serve food for the events, even if they order catering food. You will be working with an affluent part of New York City, which I think we rarely get to see, including Italian, Greek, Russian, Israeli, Jewish, Latino, Arabic, African, and other Americans, to name a few. As most of these groups are Americanized versions of their original family backgrounds, but they have established a certain wealth which gives them the privilege to enjoy such a luxurious events, to have us be there, part of it, and serve them. And I think it's a great privilege for me to have worked with these people. A significant number of my jobs were at Jewish events because their community upholds a specific type of lifestyle and religious ceremonies, including bar mitzvahs, weddings, brisk engagements. But there are other types of events as well, like birthdays, christenings, holiday parties, sweet sixteens, quinceañeras, and let's not forget the corporate events such as business dinners, promotions, executive events, conferences, training, product launches, and summits also make up a significant chunk of catering in the city and in the area. And when it comes to serving the highest class in New York City, many of these events would be confidential. And now to the key question that I think most of you are asking yourself, how much is the pay? Well, based on our friend Google search, it is between 11 to $27 per hour. But from my experience, it is between 15 to about 35 per hour. Most jobs were between 18 to 25 per hour for me. But I had experience when moving to New York City and I'm pretty good at customer service. So that really helped with my salary. As for those confidential events that you will probably never hear about, but know they exist, the salary can be even greater. Why? Because the people want to be taken care of, but also they want to be kept safe. Usually information or people that attend there are of high position or status. 